alley-oop, Randall jam it home. The difference between what a man is and what a man can be is a combination of skill and will. The opportunities here at Stanford are, are amazing, both on and off the field. That's what you expect in the Pac-12. Nerdy and proud, love it, proud to be Cardinal. Welcome inside our San Francisco studios for this edition of Stanford Timelines. I'm Mike Yam. And I'm Ashley Adamson. And over the next 30 minutes, we will be taking a look back at some of the most memorable moments in Cardinal Athletics this past season. There were quite a few of them. Uh, you know, they did more than just hit the books, Nerd Nation. School records were broken, conference titles won, a pair of national championships were captured, all to ensure the streak lived on. We'll get to that in just a bit. But first, let's head back to the football field. Two-time defending Pac-12 champs, they set out to defend their crown. And with the Sierra Nevada mountains in the background, we are in Palo Alto, California. My first football memory as a kid, honestly, was at Stanford Stadium. Just being in that atmosphere. To tailgate with the families and the other kids and to smell the eucalyptus leaves, I can still smell that out in the parking lot. Welcome to the farm. It's the 11th ranked Stanford Cardinal opening their season against the UC Davis Aggies. You look at the players they have returning, they're really talented. Stanford's football tradition carries with it lofty expectations and entering the fall of 2014, it was no different for David Shaw's 11th ranked Cardinal. A good kick by Wadman. Here comes Montgomery. Finds a seat. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Stanford. And their season is underway. It's going to be fun to watch how this team grows and develops. I think there's even some young weapons that we haven't seen. Stanford opened its season with a victory, but was tested with the brutal schedule early on. They came out ready to play and, and took it to us, and we found ourselves in a dogfight. And Stanford leaves Notre Dame Stadium with a loss. After a reeling double overtime loss to Utah, the Cardinals sat 5-5 five and five heading into the big game. From Berkeley, California, it's one of college football's great rivalries. These two teams are actually very evenly matched for the first time in a long time. Winner becomes bowl eligible in this one. Second and goal. Downhill again, right is in this time for the Stanford touchdown. And it's 6-0 early on. If you're Stanford, this is a chance to put the dagger in Cal and get some momentum going to halftime. Dan, it's picked again. Second tip interception of the game. Joe, that is the Stanford football we've all come to expect over the last five or six years. The fourth touchdown of the day for Amon Wright. And that should just about seal it for Stanford. You know, people ask me, you know, do you want to just finish the season? Absolutely not. We want to squeeze out another game, get at least a couple more weeks being around those guys because they are phenomenal human beings. Stanford sealed the win to keep the ax in Palo Alto and hovered at about 500 heading into the final game against UCLA in Los Angeles. Got him right there. Touchdown, UCLA! Throws long to the right side to the end zone. It's caught. What a grab in front of two Bruins. A three touchdown lead for Stanford. Stanford defeat the Bruins at the Rose Bowl. Stanford went into the Foster Farms Bowl against Maryland looking to win a third game in a row, a feat the Cardinal had yet to accomplish in 2014. They give it to Wright. Raymond Wright pushes and he's in. Touchdown, Stanford. Congratulations on winning the first ever Foster Farms Bowl. Our guys never, never, never stopped believing, never stopped trusting each other, never stopped trusting the coaches. They came back and fought every day. We talk about being finishers and finishing games and finishing the season, and we finished a, finished a tough game tonight. In only the third game of the 2014-15 volleyball season, the Stanford Cardinals squared off against Penn State. It was a rematch of the previous season's NCAA Regional Finals, a game in which the Nittley Lions ended Stanford's run at a national championship. It's a championship atmosphere here in Naples Pavilion. The Penn State match is still fresh in our minds. I know we were all really focused and we all had like 
a really revenge to fulfill. Yeah, I have to say it's one of my favorite matches just because like the level of volleyball was so high because of the fight between two great teams. That's what I want to see every time from Stanford. This crowd gets on their feet. We are at match point. Off the block, match point. I've never seen a better crowd at Maples. It, it was amazing. And they get it. Number two, Stanford, not for long, over number one, Penn State. What a great start to this Pac-12 Big Ten Challenge Series. The Cardinal carried the momentum of that huge victory over Penn State, going on to win 28 consecutive matches, setting a school record. Stanford to stay perfect at 19-0. Stanford win, they are 25-0. Stanford crew suffering only one loss in the regular season and posting victories in the first four rounds of the NCAA tournament. But it was the semi-final round that set up yet another match versus an all-too-familiar opponent. You need to finish it and it's not over until the game is done. Inside every one of us was like a fire, like we really, really want to beat these guys. Match point, Penn State! And Penn State upsets top-seeded Stanford! You never know what's going to happen when you step on the court but you are sure that you're gonna to have to play your best volleyball. Our team, I was really proud of them. We put our heart on the floor and played great volleyball. Coming up next, we take you across the field to kick around the soccer ball with the U.S. national team play. Jordan Morris has scored! And later, step back on the floor at Maples Pavilion. You're watching Timeline. Meet Jordan Morris. As a freshman last season, the Stanford Ford was named a first team all pac 12 and led all conference freshmen in assists, points, and was tied for the lead in goals. Despite all the national attention, Morris's unassuming attitude and work ethic has endeared him to fans, coaches, and most importantly, to his teammates. He is one of the nicest guys I've ever met, but you would never know, you know how talented he is just being around him. His talent caught the eye of Jurgen Klinsmann, who called Morris up to the U.S. men's national team one day before the first game of his sophomore season. You know, he was obviously thrilled and excited and very honored. Uh, he was, you know, to, well, should I be doing this? And he's like, well, of course you should be doing it. <laughs> the coach of your country has invited you to be part of the team. How much better can it get? Splitting time between both the U.S. men's national team and the farm, Morris was still able to lead the Cardinal to a 12-2-3 record. Unfortunately, he was away with the national team for the final Pac-12 match of the year. Stanford in control of their own destiny. If they are victorious at Cal here today, they are champions of the Pac-12 for the first time since 2001. Goal open, tap, no! Stanford is going to strike first here today. Thompson in the is. header, and it's good for a 2-1 to one lead. Brandon Vincent. Overtime here at Cal, and we will get to our second overtime here in Berkeley. As the clock ticked down, Stanford looked to make one final push. Wow! And it's in, it's gone! It's a winner, Austin Meyer, the senior, wins the Pac-12 championship for the Stanford Cardinal. It was the pinnacle of my life, I think. It was, it was absolutely amazing. I'd like to give a shout out to Jordan Morris, who's across seas yeah, with the Jordy. U.S. national team. We love you, Jordy. The Cardinals season would end with a loss to UC Irvine in the NCAA tournament. It was a game effort. Jordan Morris and company gave it everything they had. But little did Morris know, the highlight of his sophomore year was still yet to come. The fact that, you know, I got to represent my country. Takes a deflection, Jordan Morris controls. Jordan Morris has scored! The Stanford University sophomore, his first goal for the United States, gives them the lead over Mexico. Even just going to the camp was amazing, but, but stepping on the field was a moment I'll never forget. As for Morris's Stanford career, the 20-year-old isn't ready to leave the farm behind just yet. The opportunities here uh, at Stanford are, are amazing, both on and off the field, and I felt that I still had room to grow here, so having that professional career on, on the horizon. 
bringing that experience back and that knowledge back to Stanford will, will really help me as I you know, continue to try and develop here as a player. Who has done what Stanford has done through three matches so far? Who else can show me three road wins over ranked teams? The Stanford women's soccer team set the tone for their season early. Another swinging left and a goal for Chi. Chris, I'm going to call it a 12 best nominee for Chi Abagagu as she continues to dominate for the Cardinal. And they didn't let up, losing just one match in conference play the entire year, finishing their season second in the Pac-12. Needless to say, expectations were high going into the NCAA tournament. Welcome to the farm. These two very familiar with one another, the Washington Huskies and the Stanford Cardinal. These two met earlier in October, and that was a dominant Stanford win, 4-1. to Levanta with another aggressive play, and the finish gives Stanford a 1-0 lead. And a great grab by Campbell in traffic. And with that, it'll be Stanford advancing. The Cardinal would make it all the way to the College Cup, where they would drop a heartbreaker to Florida State. Florida State is on their way to the national championship game. Stanford made its seventh appearance in an NCAA College Cup semifinal, placing fourth in the nation. Stanford's 24th visit to the NCAAs in the past 25 years. I'm so happy with this team and so proud of everyone. And whether you lose, win, whatever um, the outcome is, to make it that far, that's just special as it is. I'm excited for the opportunity to you know, go out there one more time and, and try to make a run with uh, the Cardinal. The Stanford men's basketball team returned a talented trio of seniors, led by first-team all-conference point guard Chasen Randall. This is a guy that is always in attack mode. Whether he's making shots or missing shots, he's going to always be in attack mode. And Chasen Randall is so vital to this Stanford Cardinal offense, and Stanford needs him big time. Heading into their rivalry game against Cal in late February, Stanford sat at 16-9 on the season. Coming to you from the east end of the Bay Bridge in Berkeley, California. You talk about rivalry games, the records don't matter. We'll just call it the Battle of the Bay here on the hardwood. Let's go. And we are underway. Stanford controls the tip, and Chasen Randall has the basketball. Randall deep three, yes. 4.08 to go. Chasen crosses over. Floater, baseline, got it. Randall continues to dazzle. And this one ends. 69-59 in favor of the Cardinal. Good win. Let's, let's enjoy this right now. Let's enjoy it on the bus ride. Let's go. Bring it in. The Cardinal would finish out the regular season 24-13. And, and though they missed out on the NCAA tournament, their postseason was far from over. Randall knocks down the three. Great touch pass from Randall back to Marcus Allen. This is the biggest Stanford lead. Stanford won four straight in the NIT to set up a thrilling championship matchup against Miami in Madison Square Garden. Oh, what a good move. Randall goes back door and a beautiful feed from Anthony Brown. We go to overtime in the NIT championship game. Oh, nice McClellan move. down the lane, throws it down. 10 seconds to go. Randall leans in. They do call the foul. A two with tie. A three. Most likely be a game winner. For the win in the corner. No good. Stanford survives. And they win the NIT. Jason Randall was named tournament MVP, and he closed out his college career as the school's all-time leading scorer with 2,375 points. Tara Vanderveer has been the model of consistency throughout her tenure as head coach of the Stanford women's basketball team. But with a new leader on the court, the card would be tested early in a matchup against the number one ranked UConn Huskies. Maples Pavilion ready to rock and roll as the Stanford Cardinal tries to upset the number one team in America, the reigning national champs, the UConn Huskies. Jefferson driving, scooping two. Here's Nurse, a six-foot freshman. Her shot will be banked in. Although UConn got out to an early lead, Stanford showed resilience. So a chance for Stanford to tire, take the lead, and they run in another shot from the wing by Samuelson. And soon found the momentum tipping in their favor. Stanford needs three to tie. No timeouts remaining. Barrage is open. Got it! A three-pointer with 1.4 to go. And 
Mirage. He's tied it at 77. Amber Mirage. And the Cardinal has a one-point lead with 131 to play. One second left. Going to get a shot in the air, and they will not. The 47-game winning streak is over, and Stanford defeats the Yukon Huskies in a terrific game, 88-86 in overtime. That win marked the second time Vanderveer's team had ended a UConn winning streak inside Maples Pavilion. I, I really want our team to battle, and they sure did. Um, I'm proud of every one of them. Everybody did a great job. Stanford took a 24-9 record into the Pac-12 tournament, knocking off Arizona State to reach the final against Cal. Stanford advances to the final. And these Bay Area rivals going at it for the title here tonight. Tipped into the backcourt. Green has it poked away by Lily Thompson. And the hustle from Thompson. And Stanford controls. To the basket. And Stanford has their largest lead. Stanford holds on for a one-point win. And the Stanford Cardinal are Pac-12 tournament champions here in Seattle. Stanford received a bid to the NCAA tournament and would make it to the Sweet 16 for the eighth time in as many years. Their journey ended there, falling to number one seeded Notre Dame. But with Tara Vanderveer back at the helm and a talented young roster returning, the Cardinal should remain the model of consistency next season. Coming up next on this Stanford edition of Timelines, we take you to Avery Aquatic Center for a recap of two sensational water polo seasons. The Cardinal women's water polo team began their season ready to defend their title. Stanford! Opening the year with 11 straight wins and going on to finish the regular season 26 and two. Stanford hosted the 2015 NCAA tournament at the Avery Aquatic Center, giving the Cardinal home pool advantage. I mean, you've got to love the challenge and you've got to love the atmosphere. Um, UCLA brought a great game and they brought a lot of energy and, and that's what you want in a championship game. You don't want anything else. Um, in order to be the best, you got to beat the best and, and that's really what happened today. Stanford became the first school to host an NCAA championship and win while defending its title. Everything, I it still hasn't completely hit me. I mean, I, this is just amazing. The Stanford men's water polo team drenched the competition, heading into conference play with a 15-2 record. Stanford probably have the number one one-two punch in the country in Brett Bonatti and Alex Bowen. Drew Holland in the cage is a difference maker for this Cardinal team. Coming into the USC game, we knew that this was going to be the only time we play them in the regular season and that it was, we better make it count. Bonatti ready. And buries it. Tie game, minute 13 to go. Turn side gives it to them. Time expired. And that's it. The Cardinal dethrone number one again. It's huge for us. and We're going to try and keep this rolling through the rest of the regular season and in the playoffs. The Cardinal went on to post one of the best offensive seasons in school history and finished third overall for the second consecutive year at the NCAA Men's Water Polo Championship. Ripped it cross cage. Alex Bowen and Brett Bonani were named two of the three finalists for the prestigious Catino Award, considered the Heisman Trophy of water polo. Bonani concluded his junior campaign with a conference leading 96 goals. After winning first team all Pac-12 honors in 2014 and posting two first place finishes in the fall, Mariah Stackhouse entered the spring season with high expectations. So now the attention shifts to Mariah Stackhouse of Stanford. But after taking seventh in the Pac-12 championships, it was uncertain whether the Cardinal had a good chance of qualifying for the NCAAs. They managed to eke their way through the regionals and gained momentum into the championships thanks to significant performances from Casey Danielson. Shannon O'Bear and All-American Lauren Kim. Knocking off Arizona in the quarterfinals and USC in the semis earned them a final showdown against Baylor. There's no doubt who has the momentum right now. Mariah won 17 and 18 to put this match into extra holes. Walking down the 18th fairway with Coach and her looking at me and being like, how much fun is this? And I just replied, I'm having a blast. 
Stanford and Baylor tied at two. Now it rests in the hands of Mariah Stackhouse. Ken and Sharon, mom and dad, a deep breath. This for the national championship. And I just had this feeling that with Baylor playing as well as they were, it was gonna come down to that final match. Our putt is conceded. Now senior Haley Davis of Baylor has this putt to extend the match. And she missed it. And Stanford has won their first ever women's NCAA Division I golf championships. I remember this performance as the most an intense and amazing moment of my life. For our team that we just played so well all week and, and for it to come down to that last day and for us to have pulled it out is just amazing. It was going to come down to the wire and if there's a player you want in that last spot, it's Mariah Stackhouse. She's been in this spot before. She knows how to hit the shots. That's the culture of Stanford. It's just excellence and it permeates through throughout the entire campus, throughout the student body, throughout the faculty, teachers, departments. Everyone's just amazing and uh, I couldn't have, have chosen a better place to be. Located in the heart of Silicon Valley, Stanford has long been at the forefront of the tech revolution. And with David Shaw at the helm, the Cardinal football program has maintained its place at the forefront of the college football landscape. Nobody thought they'd ever get to Pasadena, let alone secure a victory. Remarkable. And now, in the epicenter of technology, former Stanford kicker Derek Belch has created virtual reality software that is already helping Cardinal football and may ultimately change the game. Stanford, of course, is sort of the heartbeat of Silicon Valley with all the high tech stuff. Outside of this little bubble, not a lot of people can even spell virtual reality. <laughs> they don't even know what it is. This is the way people think here. That's the Silicon Valley. That's Stanford University. This is a research institute. This is a place where we can try to say, what's next and how can we be at the forefront of what's next? The difference between this virtual reality technology and past attempts is that Belch's software uses real video instead of animation. You know, it's like watching your first 3D movie. When you put this, this headset on, you are in it. You're in the play. You are experiencing it. Now turn around and look behind you. There's your running backs. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, this guy is really cool. And man, what a great resource to have. I would assume that that's going to be pretty much everywhere in the years to come. It's got a chance to be phenomenal as far as the amount of things we can get student athletes to experience um, without actually technically being there. So we got incoming freshmen. They can almost feel experienced after a summer. We walk into training camp, they've already run these plays over and over again. They can make quicker decisions. Um, so going forward, this thing is, has a chance to be really exciting. I'll tell you this, uh, in 2015, no one in the Pac-12 is gonna have this other than Stanford, and that, that's a big deal. If this kind of becomes the, the de facto way to train in the NFL and college and high school, and it started here, how cool is that? And that is going to do it for this edition of Stanford Thailand. But before we go, Mike, I want to say one last time, congratulations to Stanford on continuing, in my mind, what is one of the most incredible streaks in all of sports. 39 straight years, a Cardinal sports team has won Clap a up. national championship. I think yeah. that's impressive. Think that's, that's even a louder clap. Than yeah, that yeah. actually deserves a round of applause. <laughs> we leave you, though, with one final look back at the great moments in Stanford athletics from this past year. For Ashley Adamson, I'm Mike Yam. Thanks for watching Stanford Timelines. The guy across from you, let's get it started. They're buying into our philosophy and they're trusting the process and every day they're working hard and they're executing. Great pass from Burgess. Oh no! Match will go to Stanford. With the shot and the goal! Stanford takes a 1-0 lead. Hogan makes a cut. Another for a touchdown! Stanford survives and they win the NIT. And the Stanford Cardinal are Pac-12 tournament champions here in Seattle. There's a balance in their life. At some point in time, none of us are always going to be at our best. But collectively, we can because we have enough people here, we have enough character here to still get the job done when we have to.